This is the all new Amazfit Cheetah Pro. It's got a big bright AMOLED touch enabled display, dual band GPS, offline mapping and navigation, a speaker and microphone built in for taking phone calls, and even has internal storage for playing back music. Oh, and it comes in at just $300. Let's talk about it. Welcome back, I'm Dave from Chase to Summit, and in today's video, we're gonna take a deep dive on the brand new Amazfit Cheetah Pro. We'll go through all of the hardware, talk about the new and exciting features, and of course, we'll take a look at things like GPS and heart rate accuracy. The Amazfit brand has been around for a while, and no, they're not associated with Amazon at all. They're doing their own thing. And when Amazfit first hit the market a couple of years ago, they released a lot of inexpensive devices like the Amazfit BIP, which was under $100. But lately, they've been launching more and more devices that are more expensive, like the Amazfit Falcon that comes in at like 500 bucks, and they've changed the game quite a bit. And it seems like what's led to Amazfit's popularity is their price to performance ratio. They managed to put a lot of features on these watch and not charge a lot of money for them, and that's the case with the Amazfit Cheetah Pro as well. Specifically, the Cheetah Pro seems to be targeting some of the competition out there, like the Garmin 400 265 and the 965, and even the Coros Piece 2, and in some ways, it's even challenging the Apple Watch Ultra at that $800 price point at a much lower price point. I've personally been wearing and testing this Amazfit Cheetah Pro for about a week now, which is not a ton of time, but I do think I've spent enough time with this watch and gotten enough data out of it to share my thoughts with you in this video today. Diving right in, there are two models of the Cheetah. There's the Cheetah and the Cheetah Pro. In between the Cheetah and Cheetah Pro, there are three main differences. First of all is the build quality. On the Cheetah Pro, there are some bits of metal on the bezel and the buttons. It's just a little bit higher build quality compared to the Cheetah, which is mainly plastic. The Cheetah Pro also comes with this really nice nylon band, while the less expensive Cheetah does not and comes with a typical silicone band. And finally, the Cheetah Pro also has a speaker and microphone on board, while the Cheetah Non-Pro does not. And when it comes to pricing, the Cheetah Non-Pro comes in at $229, while the Cheetah Pro comes in at $299 here in the USA. And for the purpose of this video, I'll be mainly talking about the Cheetah Pro because that's the one I have on hand. However, the features between these two watches are very similar, so this video should apply to both models in some ways. Next up, let's talk about compatibility because this is a growing issue these days. You've got watches out there like the Apple Watch that only works on iOS devices, and now Google and Google Wear OS is starting to lean that way too and only work on certain Android devices. The good thing about these Amazfit devices is they're cross-platform compatible. The Amazfit Cheetah and Cheetah Pro are both compatible with with iOS or Android devices, so you could have just about any phone out there and be able to use this watch, which is great. Now, in order to use the Amazfit Cheetah, just like all the Amazfit watches out there, you will need the Zep app on your phone. This is available on both the Google Play and iOS App Store. It's a simple download. The app itself is pretty well polished. It's a pretty nice user experience. And I'm not gonna dive too deep on the actual app because I've covered it in great detail in several other videos. And I'll link one up here if you wanna learn more about the app. Largely, the app experience in the Zep app on your phone is intuitive and well laid out. It's got all the basics for syncing your health and wellness data like step count, calories burned, activities, your sleep history, and more. And you've got training tools in there like like estimated VO2 max and your training load and things like that. And that's about all I wanna talk about with the Zep app for now. We will touch on more aspects of it as we go through this video. Next up, let's talk about the hardware of the Amazfit Cheetah Pro. As you can see here, the watch is quite nice looking. It's got a nice metal bezel. It's got metal buttons as you can see here, and it's pretty slim and overall a pretty small footprint. This watch comes in at a 47 millimeter diameter and it's about 12 millimeters thick. The Amazfit Cheetah Pro is also pretty light with the included nylon band, this watch comes in at just 43 grams. And for a quick size comparison, I've got a few other watches on the table here. All the way on the left, we do have the Amazfit GTR4, then we've got the new Amazfit Cheetah Pro, then we've got a 45 millimeter Apple Watch, then we've got the Amazfit Falcon, and all the way on the right is the Amazfit T-Rex Ultra. And if you were curious, I have 165 millimeter circumference wrists, and this is what the Amazfit Cheetah Pro looks like on my wrist. And for one more quick comparison, I do have the Apple Watch Ultra on the right side, and we've got the Amazfit Cheetah Pro, and as you can see, they're both pretty similar in size, though the Apple Watch Ultra is quite a bit thicker than the Amazfit Cheetah Pro. 
Moving around the device, you can see that on the front, like I said, we do have a titanium bezel, which does feel quite nice. It does feel like high quality. And I have taken this on a couple of trail runs. And in terms of durability, it's held up so far, no scratches or anything like that. On the right side, we do have two buttons. On the top, there's a digital crown that both rolls and acts as a button. And below that, we do have a dedicated back button, which I like quite a bit. This is kind of a standard layout where you select with the top button and you can go back through the menus using the lower buttons. Flipping the watch over, you will notice a couple of things. First of all, are these little metal contacts on the top and bottom here. And this is pretty standard with Amazfit devices. As you can see here, I have the Amazfit GTR4 on the right and it's got the same contacts. These little contacts are used for the Amazfit proprietary charger. As you can see here, it's a little magnetic puck and all it does is stick on the back there and now I'm charging the watch. The nice thing about the Amazfit charging cable is that it's not proprietary for this one watch. A lot of watches use this cable so you can find them pretty inexpensively on Amazon if you want a couple of extra so you don't lose them. And then right in the middle of the watch here is the optical heart rate sensor and SpO2 sensor. And again, this is very similar to a lot of other Amazfit models like the T-Rex Ultra I have here has the same heart rate sensor. It is kind of strange because the GTR4 has a different heart rate sensor and I believe this one's supposed to be a little bit more accurate but they're using this one instead. Not sure why, but we'll talk about the accuracy of this sensor later in this video. And in terms of build quality, the Amazfit Cheetah Pro does feel quite nice when it's in your hand and on your wrist. It doesn't feel cheap or anything like that. The back is made out of plastic, but that metal bezel does give it a more premium vibe. The buttons in the digital crown on this watch also feel pretty high quality. They've got a nice click to them. And the digital crown is pretty responsive, but it's not like super responsive. So if I try to scroll the menu here, you can see that I'm scrolling quite a bit, but there's not a whole lot of scrolling happening on the screen. Still though, it's very easy to use. When it comes to the included band on the Cheetah Pro, like I said at the beginning of this video, the Cheetah Pro, unlike the Cheetah Round, does come with this nylon band. And I gotta say, I really like the material they used on this band. The little clasp part on the back here is actually made out of metal and it does feel really high quality. And the actual nylon bits here are really soft and they're not uncomfortable on my wrist. And the nice thing about them is they don't tend to absorb too much water. Even after a shower of something like that, it will absorb a little bit of water, but it dries out really quick. The included band is also an industry standard 22 millimeter quick release band, which means you can pop it off really easily and put on any third party band that you can find on Amazon or something like that. Quick interruption, if you're finding this video fun or helpful or anything, it'd be really great if you could go down and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. Okay, let's move on. Moving back to the front of the watch, we've got this big display. This is a 1.45 inch AMOLED touch enabled display. It's got Gorilla Glass over the top of it and it gets up to a thousand nits of brightness. So it's a really high quality display. The nice thing about this display is that it's got an automatic brightness setting. So it'll actually brighten up in direct sunlight and dim down when it's dark out. And the sensor that's used for this is quite good and it does seem to preserve battery life quite a bit. Just like other Amazfit watches, the display on the Cheetah Pro is a big selling point for this watch. It's big, it's bright, it's brilliant, it's got high resolution and it's very responsive to touch interactions. And in terms of visibility out in direct sunlight when you're out on a run or a bike ride, it's actually quite good thanks to that thousand nits of brightness. But I do find that something like the Garmin Epix Gen 2 that I have here is a little bit brighter in some situations. Now let's talk about the user interface and the smartwatch features of the Amazfit Cheetah Pro. The user interface is pretty much like all the other Amazfit watches out there. They pretty much use the same operating system on most of their watches. The watch face on the Cheetah Pro is fully customizable by just holding down on it and I can swipe left and right to see all of the pre-installed versions of this watch face. However, I can install additional watch faces using the Zep app on my phone and there's a ton to choose from within the app. The way this user interface works is from the top if you swipe down, it'll drop you into your quick menu here where you can do a variety of things like change your brightness. If you swipe up from the bottom of the screen, you drop into the sort of tile view of all of your apps and widgets. As you can see here, I've got my weather. I've got a recent activity that I did. I've got my training coach here that tells me today should be a rest day. Below that, I've got additional information for some of my training goals. If I swipe left from the home screen, it would bring up my phone notifications and that works with Android and iOS. And if I swipe right from the watch face, it brings me into the app menu where I can select different apps for doing different things. So if I want to start a workout, my workout history, my coaching app, my workout status, my heart rate, my blood oxygen level, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff in here. Another thing to note is that there's a more button down here where there's even more information like 
sun and moon, compass, barometer, menstrual cycle tracking, breathing exercises, stopwatch, and there's even a find my phone option here. Another interesting feature about the Amazfit Cheetah Pro and a lot of Amazfit watches is they come pre-installed with this camera remote. So if I open this up, it will actually allow me to remote control the camera on my smartphone. So I could set it up for a shot, go and hang out with my family and then click this button here and take a picture, which is kind of cool. The Amazfit Cheetah Pro is also compatible with Amazon Alexa as a voice assistant, as you can see here. It's trying to connect, but I don't actually use Alexa, so I can't demonstrate that, but it is compatible. So if you use that service, it might be handy for you. The Amazfit Cheetah Pro is also Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled, which is kind of interesting because this watch will also allow you to do firmware updates over the air without needing your phone nearby. The Amazfit Cheetah Pro also has a built-in speaker and microphone for taking and making phone calls along with taking voice memos like I am right now. On top of that, the microphone is used for Amazon Alexa as well. The microphone quality is actually pretty good, but the speaker is a little bit tinny and shrieky. It does get the job done though. Now keep in mind, even though this watch does have a speaker and microphone on board, there's no cellular chip or anything like that built into it. So you will need your phone nearby in order to make and take phone calls over Bluetooth. The Amazfit Cheetah Pro also has 2.3 gigabytes of internal storage for music Music, which is kind of nice. However, there is no streaming support on this watch, meaning you can't sync Spotify or Amazon or something like that in order to get your music to the watch. This watch is only compatible with MP3s, so you'll need to have those old fashioned MP3s and transfer them over to the watch using the Zep app in order for this to work. The Amazfit Cheetah Pro also has a lot of training tools on board. You get a seven day training load you can see here, and this is a really useful tool to have. This is also synced over to the Zep app on your phone as well. If I swipe over, I get my estimated VO2 max. And if I swipe over one more time, I do have a full recovery advisor. The Amazfit Cheetah Pro also has a new Zep coach feature, which tries to give you automated coaching plans based on your recent activities. And as you can see here, it's telling me today should be a rest day. If I scroll down, it gives me even more information about what I should do today. If I scroll over, it shows my recent progress on my training plan, which is zero because I'm not doing one right now. And that shows all the days of the week that I've actually been training. And when it comes to activity profile, on the Amazfit Cheetah Pro and going out for that bike ride or run. There are so many different activity sport profiles available on this watch. I think there's like over 150 to choose from. Now keep in mind that even though there's so many different activity profiles, it doesn't mean that they're unique. A lot of them are just copy and paste profiles with nothing unique about them, but there is a lot to choose from here. The Cheetah Pro also has a track run mode, which allows you to go to a running track and it'll actually use an algorithm in the watch along with GPS data to improve your accuracy, which is pretty useful. Another nice feature about the Amazfit Cheetah Pro is that it does support external sensors. As you can see here in the Bluetooth menu, I've got headphones so I can pair my earbuds, but below that there is workout accessories. Keep in mind that this is only compatible with Bluetooth smart sensors for now. It does not support Ant Plus at all. When it comes to external sensors and what's supported, the Amazfit Cheetah Pro is compatible with external heart rate sensors like this ECG sensor, and it's also compatible with cycling power meters, which is pretty interesting. Unfortunately, I don't have a power Power meter with me right now, so I have no way of testing that, so your mileage may vary. Moving right along, let's talk about navigation and mapping on the Amazfit Cheetah Pro, because just like on the more expensive Amazfit T-Rex Ultra that I have here, the new Cheetah and Cheetah Pro does support offline mapping and navigation, which is a big win. From within the Zep app on your smartphone, you can now select an area of the map to download to your watch, and then it will be stored directly on the watch, so you can be out in the mountains and not need a cellular signal to see the map, which is super cool. This is a great feature to see in a device at this price point. But keep in mind, this mapping isn't quite on the same level as something like the Garmin Epix or the 965 or the Garmin Phoenix 7. Their maps are much more advanced. The maps on the Cheetah Pro and all of the Amazfit watches do have some shortcomings. First of all, they're not routable. And what that means is you can't put in a destination and have the watch generate a route using the map to get you to that destination using turn-by-turn -turn directions. That just doesn't work on these watches. The maps also lack labels for simple things like waypoints points, points of interest, roads, trails, or even waterways. That's just not present on this watch at all. There's no text. Another thing I wanna mention is that the map experience on the Cheetah Pro is a little bit glitchy. When you zoom in and out and pan left and right, it takes a second for things to catch up and it's not very seamless. It does work, but it is a bit of a challenge to navigate around the map. With those shortcomings being said, it's still very useful to have this sort of map on a watch like this, because if you're out on a hike or a trail run, you can see context around you, where that other trail is, where the next junction is, things like that. And that's great.
great to have along with seeing a trail and how to get back to the beginning of your activity. With navigation and mapping out of the way, let's dive into GPS modes and accuracy on the Cheetah Pro. The new Cheetah and Cheetah Pro support a new system from Amazfit called MaxTrack. This is dual band GNSS, which is kind of the gold standard when it comes to accuracy when you're recording an activity. The Cheetah Pro supports up to six satellite systems at a given time on two frequencies, which is pretty cool. That means it's got the same kind of technology as something like the $800 Apple Watch Ultra. The Amazfit Cheetah Pro also allows you to customize your GPS modes to give you either good accuracy or good battery life or a balance of both. Out of the box, the Cheetah Pro is set up to use its accuracy mode, which gives you the best accuracy and uses the most battery life. However, there are additional settings. There's a power saving mode, which will use a single GPS only band to maximize your battery life. There's a custom mode that allows you to configure dual band or multi-band. And there's a new automatic mode that I haven't seen on other Amazfit watches, which is pretty cool. This will actually adjust your satellite settings depending on your situation. Now let's talk about GPS accuracy on the Cheetah Pro, because this is kind of interesting. Even though it's got that new multi-band system, there are some shortcuts here. In general, the GPS accuracy on the Amazfit Cheetah in my testing so far is acceptable and decent, but I did find some issues in certain conditions. First, let's take a look at a track workout I did. In this track run example, I had the highest accuracy setting turned on, and I did not use the track mode because I wanted to see what the GPS accuracy looked like without track mode enabled to see the raw GPS data. Here, you're looking at an overlay between the Amazfit Cheetah Pro in its highest accuracy setting, and we've also got the Garmin Epix Gen 2 Pro in its highest accuracy setting, and both of these watches are not using track mode. And finally, I've also got the Apple Watch Ultra using its excellent track mode for a baseline of comparison. And quick shout out to Apple's track mode because it's truly amazing in terms of accuracy what this watch can do. However, if I look at the Garmin Epix Pro, which was not in track mode, you can see that it's actually doing a pretty darn good job. Even though it wasn't in track mode, it's still pretty close to where I was and where the Apple Watch Ultra reported I was. And now if we take a look at the Amazfit Cheetah Pro and compare its track to the Apple Watch Ultra, you can see that it it actually did a pretty decent job here as well, but it was further off compared to the Epix Pro. Still, I'd say this is a perfectly adequate GPS track and I would not complain about it if I wasn't looking at it in a side-by-side -side comparison. And in terms of overall distance recorded in this track run example, the Apple Watch Ultra recorded 1.11 miles, the Epix Pro recorded 1.13 miles, and the Cheetah Pro recorded the same 1.13 miles as the Epix Pro, which is kind of interesting. Okay, now that we've looked at the track example, I wanna look at a trail run example because this this is where things get kind of interesting. I took the Amazfit Cheetah Pro, the Garmin Epix Pro, and the Garmin 400 255 out on the same run during a trail run activity. And what's interesting about this trail run example is that there is a few variables here. First of all, the area I was in had heavy tree cover, and on top of that, lots of rocks and boulders and hills around, which can mess with the GPS accuracy of these watches. But to add insult to injury on this particular day, there was also a lot of cloud overcast, and it was pretty rainy, which does affect GPS. GPS performance as well. So we're looking at the Garmin Epix Pro, the Garmin 400 255, and the Amazfit Cheetah Pro, and all these watches were in their highest accuracy setting. You'll notice one thing, and it's that that orange track on your screen is a little bit off. Some of the corners are a little bit cut off or overshot as compared to the other devices, and some of the turns are entirely missed by that orange track where they were caught on the other two devices. And I hate to say it, that orange track was in fact the Amazfit Cheetah Pro. It's been deviating quite a bit during this run. Again, if I wasn't comparing these watches side by side, I wouldn't think this was a terrible track or something that was totally unusable. In fact, I probably wouldn't even notice that it was off because this is a trail run. But I was comparing it to other devices and those other two devices did agree while this one did not. So it's kind of the outlier here. For this trail run example, let's talk about the overall distance recorded. The Garmin Epix Pro recorded 6.64 miles, the Garmin 400 255 recorded 6.49 miles, and the Amazfit Cheetah Pro recorded 6.37 miles. So it's really not that far off when it comes to overall distance, but the actual GPS raw data does look a little bit funky. Moving right along, let's talk about optical heart rate sensor accuracy on the back of the Cheetah Pro. Some bad news here. When it comes to accuracy, I've always had issues with the Amazfit devices and their heart rate sensors. I don't know why, but the brand as a whole, I've never had great performance from the heart rate sensor, and that's unfortunately the case with the Cheetah Pro as well. In my testing, I'm seeing a lot of deviation here with all the test runs I've done compared to my test devices, including an ECG chest sensor, which is sort of the gold standard and what I use as a baseline of comparison. This was particularly noticeable when I was out doing intervals at a track where the Cheetah Pro just did not align with the ECG 
ECG sensor at all. And once again, I have to mention, if you're not a nerd like me and overly obsessed with the data, this may not be something you even notice if you're not comparing it to other test devices. And of course, you can completely mitigate this issue by simply not using the optical heart rate sensor, getting an external sensor and pairing it to your watch, then you don't have to worry about it. And I feel like I need to mention that this is only my experience. I'm just a sample of one. And these types of optical heart rate sensors are sensitive to all kinds of variables like the hair density on your wrist, tattoos, body fat percentage, even the color of your skin can all make an effect on the accuracy of these sensors. So all I can do in this video is share my personal experience and hopefully that's helpful. Next up, let's talk about battery life on the Amazfit Cheetah because this is an area where it's really impressive. In standby or smartwatch mode in light use, you can get up to 14 days of battery life with this watch. And if you're using it very heavily with the always on display, you can expect about seven days of use. Now when it comes to GPS battery life, it's also pretty interesting because if you've got it in that highest accuracy mode we just talked about, you can expect up to 26 hours of use. If you switch into that automatic GPS mode where it toggles dual band and single band, you'll get up to 44 hours of use on a single charge in a GPS activity. And finally, if you go into the lowest power setting in single band GPS only mode, you'll get up to 54 hours of use with some sacrifice of accuracy. 54 hours of use on a single charge on a watch like this that's 300 bucks is pretty crazy, especially considering it has an AMOLED display. And that's enough battery life to complete a 100 mile ultra marathon or any backcountry adventure. Now in my real life battery experience and in my testing so far, the longest activity I did with this watch was one hour and 40 minutes long and I had it charged to 100% before the activity. When I finished that trail run, it finished at 91%. So it used about 9% of the battery during a one hour and 40 minute activity. Okay, now we have reached the point of the video where I wanna talk about final thoughts and conclusions. The Amazfit Cheetah Pro is a pretty impressive smartwatch for the price, all things considered. The build quality is pretty solid. It looks nice. It feels nice in my hand and on my wrist. And it's got all the features you could possibly ask for from dual band GPS, a great display, offline mapping and navigation, a decent app experience, and even has internal storage for music. That's a lot. That said, this watch is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I did find some issues with the GPS accuracy in certain conditions that were challenging. The offline mapping experience is a little bit glitchy and hard to use. And of course, the heart rate sensor just does not meet my expectations. So let me put it this way. If you've been on the market for a watch with an excellent display, you want something that looks premium and feels premium and is compatible with both Android and iPhone. You're an occasional runner or gym goer, but you're not obsessive over your stats like GPS accuracy or heart rate accuracy, and you wanna spend around 300 bucks, this watch might be right for you. But even though the price to feature ratio here is pretty good, there's a lot of competition out there at this price point. For example, if you're just looking for a dedicated smartwatch that can make phone calls and play music and all the things that this watch can do in a different form factor, and you've got an iPhone, the Apple Watch SE is amazing and comes in at just 249 bucks. On the other hand, if you're looking for more of a dedicated running or sports watch or something to take to the gym with more wellness features, something like the Garmin 400 255 comes in just $50 more than the Cheetah Pro at $349. And the Garmin 400 255 comes with a ton more sports and wellness tools that are far more useful than the Cheetah Pro. But that's the landscape of the competition at this $300 price point. It's pretty tough. And at the end of the day, the decision is yours. All I can do is tell you my thoughts about this watch. Now's the point of this video where I want to hear from you. Are you interested in the Cheetah Pro? Are you gonna buy one? What features sold you about it? Are you gonna get the cheaper version, the Cheetah Round? Let me know in the comments down below or if you're just gonna skip this one and wait for the next one. Definitely comment down below though. I would love to hear from you. And with that, we are finally finally reached the end of this video. And if you're still watching, you probably enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider going down and hitting that thumbs up button, hitting the subscribe button, checking out the links in the description because they do help support this channel. Go over and check out my podcast that I do on a weekly basis where I talk about these things and check out my merch store. You can buy some sweet swag like a Chase the Summit trucker hat. And I think uh, I covered everything I wanted to in this video. I probably forgot something. And if I did comment down below and tell me what it was, I hope I didn't. Okay, gotta go now. Bye.